and Sarah Larry Grayware was in a car accident on the way, it being Friday the 13th. Also, my power was out all last night till 9 in the morning. Do you live in Eagle Lake? No, Silver Lake. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, so I guess I will introduce myself because Sarah's not here. Um, and what the lecture's about for a second. I may, uh, these days I'm, you know, known as a famous award winning science fiction author because I wrote this book, Venusia. It's not really award-winning, but it was shortlisted for the feminism in science fiction prize. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't win because a guy winning the feminism prizes is a little embarrassing. I'm a feminist, and uh, anyway, it's called the Tiptree Award, and uh, I recommend books by James M. Tiptree, a woman who pretended to be a man, wrote science fiction for many years before they discovered the shocking truth. But to become a writer of science fiction, I started out, um, I went a long road writing for sort of torturous Henry James style fiction and trying to get published anywhere I could with any kind of text I could. And I was born basically into the art community. As some people are Vietnamese and black. I'm art. My father was an artist and uh, an art teacher and I grew up uh, among artists and my fiance today is a painter and it just it's a long my sister's a painter everyone's painting in art so I started out working in New York for artists um, on the side while I was getting a PhD and in, uh, in literature and um, also started my first publications where were art criticism uh, and today Sarah had invited me here to talk about my art criticism and read some of it to you but before uh, before I start, I wanted to set it up with um, uh, a mini little lecture about the Battle of Marengo and Napoleon and the, the art of warfare. And so the, the lecture is entitled "The Art of War," with "war" crossed out and criticism put over. I was obsessed as a child with Napoleon. Uh, from who knows why, what psychosexual explanations there are. But Anyway, I kind of forgot about him a long t for a long time, but in my new novel, there's a war gamer, a war game designer in the future who builds an amazing uh, Napoleonic uh, game in holograph internet game in the future, and the artificial intelligence he creates to be Napoleon becomes such a great warrior at this game that it has to come outside of the game and it becomes the world's first AI that's like a, a real living creature. So that's how I got back into Napoleon. And as, as I was uh, researching, um, I discovered a lot of interesting things about this one battle that really um, create a kind of metaphor with which I can understand how criticism functions. People don't, people in the art world and art critics don't talk too much about the so-called art of war. There was a famous essay by Arthur Danto about the Battle of Gettysburg, which, which I recommend where he attempts to uh, describe the whole battle as a kind of massive canvas of pathos and tragedy. Uh, but that's not the kind of art of war I'm going to talk about today as an introduction. I'm just going to talk about the actual uh, art of war and how battles are won and lost and, uh, and show you some maps of this particular battle. The Battle of Marengo was fought on 14th June 1800. And it was a seminal moment in Napoleon's career. He had recently taken over the government and displaced the French directory and become uh, installed himself as a dictator, as first consul of France. Uh, why he did so, there are many different explanations in history. We tend to get the English side of that history. My view of Napoleon is, is more of the French side of, of the story. Anyway, he took over France. France was completely falling apart in 1800. He took it over, and within a year, the whole country was working again, organized, and ready to fight. Um, but the country was being attacked by the English money. They were financing armies on all sides, and there was uh, the Austrians were invading uh, or along the Rhine near where I live today, Cologne, uh, and they expected that Napoleon would fight them there. But meanwhile, in Italy, the French Revolution had already taken over and subsumed parts of northern Italy and uh, an Austrian army paid for by English gold had landed and attempted <coughs> to, uh, 
to defeat the French armies that were down there and outnumbered. So Napoleon's